Okay, we ready? Okay, here we go. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. John 12, verse 3. Here we go again. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. John 12, verse 3. Last week, I shared something in the evening that I did not share with you ladies in the morning. And that thing is when we were talking about Lazarus um, coming back from the dead and uh, that he would, uh, he would die again, uh, well, I shared with them in the evening that where was Lazarus when Jesus called him back? He was in paradise. He was talking with Isaiah. He was talking with um, um, Jonah and Micah and, and Moses and Daniel and all of those people. And he was drawn back from that place that he was at in paradise. When he dies again, because he, his, this body, his body will die again, when he died the second time, he looked right into the face of Jesus. And so to remember that, to have, draw that in and just uh, remember how that all worked. And so, um, Lord Jesus, as we just come into this study right now, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would, um, that you would reign, Lord, over this meeting time. Lord, that our hearts would be sensitive to your Holy Spirit, that you would speak in a way that you haven't spoken before to us, Lord, that we would hear your voice and that we would respond to it and we would be aware of who you are and what you're doing. And we just thank you, Lord. We are so thankful that you are, um, that we get to glorify you. We just get to glorify you. So, Lord, we pray that you would be glorified today and that you would be lifted up in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I, I want to say about the cookbooks, um, the cookbooks are being sold for $5, $5. And I know a lot of you are saying, well, I get my recipes online, I've got a bunch of cookbooks, but give it to somebody because of the other things that are in it. Not because of the recipes, but because of the other things that the stories that are in it, the um, uh, the uh, not devotional, the testimony that are in there about how this recipe came to be, and uh, so you want to have that at just that low price. And quite honestly, we we've got a bunch we need to sell. So. <laughs> Christmas is coming, somebody's birthday is coming, um, Thanksgiving's coming, weddings are coming, y y end of school is coming. All these holidays, you have opportunity to give somebody a cookbook for it. Just remember, oh, you can give it to the teacher? Yes. Pass the word. So these, all these recipes are from people from Refuge, so... Yeah, so God is so good. I got to tell you, in case I seem a little more rattled than most days, um, I am because um, I left the house late, and then I got caught up in traffic, and then I was like, okay, I won't go that way because there's going to be a lot of traffic that way, so I went another way, and oh, here's all the traffic this way, okay, so I didn't know they had all the traffic here on Beach Boulevard at this time, and so... Because I was running late, all these people were, must have been running late as well. So, you know what happens when you're running late? If you spend the rest of the day trying to catch up, and I'm just like, okay, and let's get into the study. Okay, okay, okay. I can just remember anything that I wrote down here. So, 
So I am so thankful that the Lord is with us. I am so excited about getting into this lesson today. And um, uh, so in chapter 12, as we start in chapter 12, it says, then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany. And remember, Bethany means house of poverty. So he came to this place of the poor. Now, Bethany wasn't all poor people, but the meaning of the name is house of poverty. And I, I repent for having named my daughter Bethany. <laughs> Um, God has been gracious to her, and she does not live in poverty. Um, but as he explains it, he goes on, and he came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead, in case there was any confusion about who this Lazarus is. I haven't read about another Lazarus, but he wanted to make sure that we all know that the Lazarus house that he was going to was the one who had been raised from the dead, the one who he had pulled out of paradise so that he could come and uh, be alive again. And there they made uh, him a supper, and Martha served, and there's no indication that she complained while she was serving. <laughs> Remember the last time we saw about Martha, she was saying, tell Mary she needs to help. But here we have her, and it just says that Martha served. Martha has come to a place of finding her place with the Lord. Remember earlier when, uh, before, uh, when Lazarus had died and she went out to meet Jesus at that time. Something, I believe, happened at that time that was more than even what happened with Lazarus being raised. I think that time with Jesus made a difference in her heart. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. He sat at the table. He was seated with Christ at the table. And then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. And so what do we find in these verses? We find that Jesus is comfortable in a place of the poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus found a home that he was comfortable in, and uh, it was a place of the poor. He was at home with Martha serving. We find her serving, again, without complaint. Philippians 2, 14 and 15, do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God, without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Can you imagine if we will serve without complaining, we are lights that shine in the world just by serving without complaint. We are showing what Jesus is like. And he was at home sitting together with his friend Lazarus. In John 15, 15, I no longer call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. It says that he was sitting with his friend at the table there in Lazarus's house. And uh, he would be told all of the things. Of, co of course, Lazarus already knew what was going to happen after he died. So uh, he already had that information. And also, Lazarus is seated with Christ. Ephesians 2, 5 through 8. Even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come, that's why we're seated there, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. So writing that down, Ephesians 2, 5 through 8, and then we find Mary was pouring out her love for him. True worship. This 
ointment that she had, this fragrance that she had, would have been a part of her dowry. It would have been a part of something that she was keeping for the man that she loved, the man that she would marry. And now she is pouring it out on Jesus because Jesus was the man that she loved. He was the person that she loved, and she poured it out, and that's what true worship is, when we take the thing that is most important to us and we give it to God, and we allow him to have it. He was at home where there is worship and preparation for what's next with the Lord, because we see in, in, uh, in 2 Corinthians 2.15, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. So we are the fragrance of Christ. We, what kind of fragrance do we uh, give off? When we're in a place where, for instance, uh, um, okay, so this what that's one time I was with Vanjie, and we were on our little retreat, our little ladies' retreat, a small one, uh, five or eight of us, I think, at the time. And um, it was when the oils were all new. And she put them all on at the same time. And I immediately lost my voice because of the fragrance all being mixed together. This was a pure fragrance that she was pouring out on Christ. It was pure. And it would permeate everything in the room. It would get into the clothes of the people that were there. So that when they left that place where Jesus was worshipped, they still had the fragrance of Christ on them. Do we still have the fragrance of Christ and do we pass it on? When people are near us, do they get the fragrance of Christ or do they get our smelly socks? <laughs> they should get the fragrance of Christ. And not only was she worshiping Jesus, but she was also preparing him for what was ahead of him in just a few days. Did she realize that was what she was actually doing? I don't know. May I say to you, to quote J. Vernon McGee, that Judas, when it gets into... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just jumped right ahead. She was preparing him for his burial... Jesus makes it very clear that that is what she was doing when we get to, down to uh, verse 7 in his response to Judas. And um, as she was preparing him for that, and I think I have it down in my, my notes a little bit later, um, that um, Jesus would not have been prepared with the oils when they took him down from the cross and put him into the tomb. Because Mary came by the next day, Mary Magdalene came by the next day for the purpose of anointing him with the oils. So she was preparing him beforehand, before the death took place. Okay, so that's what's happening here. And so, um, but one of his disciples... Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii? It's not mine, but I want to know why you didn't do it. And given to the poor. This, he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was in it. So he was a thief. John has written that he was a thief. And... Um, as I was saying, uh, may I say to you that Judas was a hireling. He did not care for the sheep. He was not a good shepherd. He was nothing but a hireling. I, I don't know if this fits in this, but I was just, um, as I was studying this, something came up 
about the difference between Peter and Judas. They both denied Christ. But Judas decided to go the way of despair. And Peter went the way of repentance. That's the difference between the two. We can either go the way of despair, and Judas took his own life. Is he in heaven? Is he in hell? I don't know. The Bible is unclear on that, so I will be unclear on that as well. The Bible's silent on it. I will be silent on it because I don't know, and I'm not going to go and make some kind of decision. Of, well, maybe it was... No. We don't have time to do that. And so, anyway, he was a hireling. And Jesus tells Judas to let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. You see, it's right there. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. There will always be poor, but I'm going to have to leave you guys here on earth. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will send you a comforter. I will send you the Holy Spirit. He said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And so there is going to be a last time for all of us with people. There is going to be a last kiss for someone. There is going to be the last hug for someone. There will be a last time for you to say, I love you. No one really knows exactly when that last time will be. So make certain that you tell people today. Make certain that you kiss your loved ones today and that you hug them today. None of us knows whether somebody is sick or not. None of us knows. Our, our life can be taken in an accident, in a freak accident even. We don't know, so let's live every day, every minute, like it's our last minute with someone and care for them in the same way. And so in verse 9, now it, yeah, a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came, not for Jesus' sake only. Oh, we ain't coming just to see Jesus. We're coming to see what he did. But that they might also see Lazarus, whom he has raised from the dead. But the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also, because he was evidence of who Jesus was, because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. So now they're worried about what's going to happen to them. What's going to happen? Remember before, they said, if we leave this alone, everybody, everybody's going to believe in him. And so here they are again saying that same thing. And then the next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. And then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. And so, here we, what is all of the, um, the next day, the next day, picture this, the lambs are coming in to be inspected. They're all being brought in to Jerusalem. And Jesus, the Lamb of God, is coming in to be inspected. And they found no fault in him, so he could become the sacrifice. That's what was happening on this day as he came in. So he is the perfect sacrifice. He'll be coming in with all kinds of hoopla, if you will. 
And after all this preparation, the people are coming in Jerusalem to get ready for the Passover. And when they heard that Jesus was coming, they took branches, and, and, and uh, they, we already um, talked about that, and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, repeating the words of Psalm 118, 25 through 26. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What is it about these palm branches? Why did they pick palm branches? Well, the story is that about 200 years ago, before this time, uh, not 200 years ago now, 200 years ago before their time, um, the... um, the children of Israel were, uh, um, the Israelites were under an Assyrian king whose name meant evil. It was Antichus Epiphanes that was over them. He was evil beyond evil beyond evil. Life was horrible under his rule. And so what happened? Ju- Judas, um, Judas Maccabees came and, and gathered up as his own army against the Assyrian government and fought for about nine years, at which time they drove out the Assyrians. And because they had been delivered from such oppression, they tore down the palm branches and began to uh, celebrate their deliverance. That's how the palm branches got started. That's what they were expecting Jesus to do. Remember the first part of it says, save now, O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. They were looking for him to overthrow the government, deliver them from the oppression of the Romans. So when he didn't come out against the government, that's when they wanted him killed. What we refer to today as Palm Sunday, they expected Jesus to deliver them from the Romans. When they realized he doesn't have a political agenda, they cry, crucify him. They were not interested in the cross. Yes, we must be aware of what's going on politically. Yes, we must vote. Yes, we must know what our Constitution says and what the Bill of Rights says. And yes, we need to make sure we have our voices heard when bills are being written to the detriment of our children. And at the same time, at the same time, we must know where true salvation comes from. Cling to the cross. Carry your cross. Share what Jesus did on the cross. Because that's what it's all about. That's what all of John is about. It's about what Jesus did. That he carried the cross. Should we not should we not be involved politically? That's not what I'm saying. We should be involved politically. Excuse me. Gotta stop crying up here. It's bad enough the makeup goes, and then you got your nose running too. Which, what's a person to do? It's the cross. Matthew twenty-one seven says tells us that they laid. Oh, or no, that's that's on the next issue. But it's the cross. It's the cross. Yes, be involved politically. Yes, do that and and. But the cross is the most important. So I must say, the political is the and, politically. So be involved with what Jesus did on the cross and be involved politically. Um, In Matthew 21, 7, it tells us that they laid their garments on the donkey and then put him on the donkey so that he rode in as a king would. And the evidence of that is in Zechariah 9, 9 and Isaiah 40, 19. And so they didn't under, his disciples did not understand these things until after he was glorified. Then they remembered what he had told them. Hindsight is twenty twenty. How many of us have learned that so far? We know exactly what we should have done. But we didn't do it. Because hindsight is twenty twenty. We understand things only when he is glorified in our lives. 
Only when Jesus is glorified in our lives. When Jesus is lifted up and he's number one in my life, I understand things more quickly. I see things more clearly. I am more sensitive to his voice and to hear from the great shepherd when he's the one who's getting the glory and not me. And so what happened with this? And so um, there, uh, verse 17, there the people... Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. For this reason, the people also met him because they heard that he, what he, had done, that he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, you see that you are accomplishing nothing? Look, the world has gone after him. What are we going to do? Did you notice you're not doing anything? Is what they're saying to each other. We've got to do something. It goes on to say, then there, now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. And then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. And now that's the King James Version that just came out of there. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And I don't know. I know I love the old King James, and I, I like the New King James, but there's something about the phrase, we would see Jesus, not we wish to see Jesus. That's my desire to see Jesus. We would see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I want to see him at work in my life. I want to see him at work in your life. I want to recognize him wherever I go. I want to see Jesus. We would see Jesus. When Jesus was born as a little baby, people were saying, we want to see Jesus. And now at his death, pending death, they're saying, we would want to see Jesus. We want to see him now. And when it talks about the Greeks, it's, uh, there, there were only the Greeks and the Jews at that time. So it was just talking about anybody who was not Jewish. And so what happened is that um, Philip came. So they said to, uh, they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip came and told Andrew. And in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. Andrew is always drawing people to Jesus. Andrew's always taking people to Jesus. Andrew was the one who introduced his brother to Jesus. Andrew is always the one bringing people to Jesus, and there is nothing like bringing people to Jesus. There is nothing like it when that person says, yes, I want to accept Jesus. Yes, what you're saying is true. Oh, what a joy it brings to our hearts. Take the opportunity to share Christ whenever you get the chance to. And most, probably most of the time, you're going to get people who are not interested but you just did what God told you to do because you might just be planting seeds. Somebody else is supposed to do the watering. Somebody else is supposed to do the harvesting. So share Jesus whenever you get a chance to, the blessings that come from that. But Jesus answered them saying, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, and so he's telling them what's going to happen. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. I don't think I need a lot of explanation on this, do I? You know that you put a seed in the ground and it multiplies, but only after it dies. The seed must die to germinate and to create another plant so that that plant now is going to produce more. It's going to produce more fruit. It's going to produce more seeds, more of things that are coming together. So I don't think a whole lot of explanation on this is necessary. Do you? Okay, I won't spend any time on it then. Because you guys got it. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. He who loves his life in this world will lose it. It's not saying that we hate everything about ourselves while we're here. It's saying that we hate 
what the world does. That we're not living for the world, that we're living for Christ, not living for the world. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. Anyone, if anyone serves me, him my father will honor. So that grain of wheat, I just want to refer to this, that grain of wheat that's put into the ground, Romans 6, 11 through 13. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. Don't put yourself in those places. Don't pick up that which tempts you, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. And so if anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Pay attention to who you follow. Serve the Lord with gladness. Be in his presence. Be someone who God can be at home in your heart. Uh, Be someone who God can be at home in your heart. Because blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Be someone who God can be at home in your heart because you serve without complaining. Philippians 2, do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Be someone who God calls his friend and be seated with Christ at his table. Ephesians 2, even when we were dead in trespasses, He made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus and be someone who God can be at home in your heart because you know the fragrance of worship and you give it all to Jesus. 2 Corinthians, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are saved and among those who are perishing. Let's do everything we can to cause that fragrance to linger on everyone who comes in contact with us because if anyone serves me, let him follow me and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my Father, will honor. And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you. I thank you, Lord, for a peace that surpasses all understanding that keeps our hearts and our minds in you, Christ Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for courage to walk through the day. I thank you, Lord, for the strength that you give us to share your word and to share who you are. Thank you for the strength that you give us in our bodies in service of doing things. And Lord, thank you for the strength that you give in our minds when the bodies don't work and we pray for people and we talk with people. And it's not a physical thing that we're doing, but we're just giving it all to you. And so, Lord, would you use us as much as you can? Would you cause us, Lord, to have hearts that are wholly and completely given unto you, that we might honor you, bless you, and glorify your name today. Lord, I pray for the small groups that they would encourage, strengthen, guard, and Lord, that you would be magnified. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Go to your small groups.
Thank you for listening to this Heart to Heart Women's Bible Study recorded at Refuge Calvary Chapel in Huntington Beach. We hope you've been encouraged by today's lesson and will join us again as we continue to study through the Word of God. For more information about the Heart to Heart Women's Ministry, please visit our website at www.refugefamily.com or call our office at 714-891-9495. Giving up, letting go, standing up, stepping out.